friends, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. We know people and stuff. We know people and stuff. We know we do we do things. You know, <laughs> that's that's that my was, that's my Dennis O'Neill. That's person. weird. You went like <laughs> Russian into like <laughs> and then to Brooklyn and yeah. or Chicago, whatever. I don't. I have no idea what that was. It works. Like, it's, a, it's a sound bit now. Oh it. God, <laughs> <laughs> my moose ones beat my sister. <laughs> you can find Fort Worth Roots on all your favorite streaming services: Pandora, Apple Podcasts, Spotify iHeartRadio and many more also on social media TikTok Twitter Instagram Facebook just look for Fort Worth Roots and we are on YouTube there are videos associated with all of these episodes just look for Fort Worth Roots this was an incredibly exciting week it started off with Scott over at Pouring Glory taking us on as a sponsor they now sponsor the Fort Worth Roots podcast and this is going to allow us to do a lot more interesting and awesome things with the show including putting on events for you here in the city of Fort Worth. You f- you can you can find Pouring Glory at 1001 Bryan Avenue. That's Fort Worth, Texas 76104. We'll put that in the show notes. This is the near south side area. If you haven't been there, you got to try it out. We want to have sponsors like this, places that we really believe in, services and products and things like that. And here's what it says about our new sponsors on their little uh, Google search page. Pouring Glory is a growler filling station that serves fresh craft beer, food, and cocktails. We've also got an array of wines and non-alcoholic mocktails. Our display kitchen will add excitement as our chefs prepare your gastropub style food, including regular chef specials. We are the first on the market to have a growler filling station as well as being a quick service restaurant. Our historic building has an old industrial motif consisting of exposed brick, gears, gauges, and pipes. Some refer to this look as a steampunk theme, making it a unique and relaxed atmosphere. I love this place. I love the people that work there. Scott and his crew are just awesome people, and they've got a full wall of just excellent craft beer. So you got to go check these folks out, and whenever you get there, tell them you heard about them on the show. I'm going to ask Scott to put together like maybe a special thing on the menu for Fort Worth Roots people or something. I don't know. What do you think, Scott? Anyway, big shout out to Scott and Pouring Glory. Thank you for sponsoring the Fort Worth Roots podcast. We also want to tell you about Hawk Walker Originals. You can find them at HawkWalker.com. They offer a huge variety of unique and personalized gifts. Also, laser engraving for customizing just about anything you can think of. See all of their products at HawkWalker.com. And if that wasn't enough excitement, we got to hang out with the pod squad. We had a bunch of awesome Fort Worth podcasts come together. We were brought there by Visit Fort Worth to represent our city and talk a little bit about podcasting and uh, just kind of do the whole thing. If you're watching our social media feeds, we posted videos uh, and pictures of this incredible event. It was great. I learned that tourism here in Fort Worth brings in $3 billion in revenue. Uh, I I guess that was the number for last year, but it's just a huge industry and it employs 30,000 people. And uh, this is just some of the information that was covered at the Visit Fort Worth annual meeting that we were uh, very honored to be a part of. And then after all that, the pod squad got together and we enjoyed the Tim Love after party and then we kept it going at a few other places. These people are just fun to hang out with. They're my homies. And I uh, hope we get to do more awesome stuff with the uh, Jerry Jonestown Massacre, uh, Forever Reckless, Corks and Cowtown, and the Funky Panther. Big shout out to Visit Fort Worth. Thank you so much for including the Fort Worth podcast scene. This was just a mind-blowing honor. It was great. Thank you so much. Our guest today has been on the Fort Worth Roots podcast in the past. We have been to a festival that he put on last year, and today we are going to talk about year two. I'm talking about the Psychedelic Panther, and you can find information on the Psychedelic Panther Festival that's happening this year at Lola's by going to psychedelicpanther.com. This starts April 7th, and it's going to be an incredible show. And you've got to go check it out. It was incredible last year. It's going to be even better this year. We're also joined in studio today with our wonderful stand-in co-host, Genevieve. She has been on episodes with us in the past, and she was nice enough to give us a little bit of her time and uh, co-host another episode with us. Lots more information on sponsors and more events that we'll be attending over the next few months at the end of this episode, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's enough talking out of me. Please give it up for our friend, the front man for Space Poets, the man putting on Psychedelic Panther, and my friend, Joe Guzman. Let's start the show. I got 
Joe Guzman and the wonderful Genevieve is back Hello. with us. Hello. Thanks for being here, brother. It's a pleasure always. Genevieve, thanks for hanging out. Always. We just did one with Dennis O'Neill, and now we're back at it again. Double dogging it. Saturday. On a Saturday afternoon. Saturday's wild. Yeah, it's the best. So today we're here to talk about year two of the Psychedelic Panther, now ooh, at Lola's. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Year two has arrived. It is going to be um, shooting for... Not three days. We got two days, but they're both going to be amazing, stellar days um, filled with fun activities for, for everyone. So That's so exciting. Two's plenty, man. Uh, three was like a marathon, right? <laughs> yep. Three three was long, and uh, I think uh, three was, um, yeah, it's um, redundant. It know? went <laughs> great, though. I mean, and, and you had the opportunity to squeeze a lot more bands in. Yeah. You had two stages going, three days to get it done, and I mean, it was incredible. I mean, you you kind of rewrote some Fort Worth history with this one. Yeah, it's yeah. the first time that we've had a, as, as far as I know of, a psychedelic themed uh, music series. Right? It's it's been a while. It's Here been a while Worth. coming for Fort Worth. You know, I think um, there's a lot of creatives who walk in that world who feel underrepresented so I, i'm glad to bring that to them and yeah it's really them. nice that you've given them a platform yes, yes, yes. so anything different uh this year i know the lineup is different you've got some return bands i know we got apuk the destroyer coming back apuk's coming back when i saw that yeah. dude i was like jesus this is great <laughs> yeah so for genevieve i, don't I think was she not knows there this, yeah i did not apuk the destroyer year. played their first show ever they've been a band for i think eight years Oh, longer, seven or eight longer. I think Is it longer? They played their first show in, 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 in about as long, about six or seven years. You know, they, they just got together again after a long hiatus for that festival. So, oh, yeah. okay. I thought that was their first time ever playing together on stage. No, no, no. no? No. Okay. You anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was incredible. And uh, people flew in from all over the country to see that band and everything else we had going on at Psychedelic yeah. Panther Dro last year. Drove across state lines. You know, Matthew has, I guess, uh, fans all over the place. So. Matthew Broyles, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. But anything uh, outside of that, outside of the lineup change? Uh, well, there's going to be two light shows this year. Ooh. Okay. So... Um, I expect the outside stage to look colorful at nighttime. Um, going bigger in that arena. Um, new artist. Uh, we got um, other artists that I've brought in. Lorelai K, who is um, a wonderful ambient um, band from Denton. Um, and uh, something special about Lorelai K is they have a, a trans vocalist. You know, it's the first band I've seen like that who who uh, makes music on, on that kind of pop level, and you know they're showcasing her as a trans vocalist. So I thought that was really cool. That's really okay. interesting. That's not me. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and this is starting uh, Friday, right? Uh, the, she plays... Hell's well, I mean, I mean the festival. Festival starts Friday and Saturday, yeah. And this is April what? April 7th and 8th. April 7th and 8th. Put that in your calendar, folks. Absolutely. Yeah. April's going to be a busy month, man. Starting off with the incredible Psychedelic Panther, and oh, yeah. then uh, we'll be doing the River Oak Spring Fest car show. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of cool stuff busy. coming. Lots of wee beasties are going to be there this year. Um, if you've never seen the wee beasties, there's like 10 people on stage. There's wow. a whole horn section, and it's punk rock infused of um, blues of the horn section with a little bit of psychedelia, a little bit of everything going on. Where are they yeah. out of? They're out of Denton as well. Okay. Yeah. I don't um, know. A lot of good stuff coming out of Denton these oh, days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely. I, I think uh, the more we can cross streams, if you will, with the Denton community, the the better, you know, for everybody. You know, uh, Fort Worth crossing streams with Denton and Dallas, you know, to to compile it into um, one large collaborative music scene. You know, yeah. Full of creative, so. Definitely yeah. Denton. Yeah, Denton. Music. Not a big Dallas fan myself. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be making a move to Dallas <laughs> soon, and he's he's making fun of yeah, me for changing from Fort Worth to Dallas. We're losing one of our main Fort Worth cheerleaders to Dallas. Yeah, uh, it happens. Well, God. Genevieve, just uh, you know, embrace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. I'll still be here. I'll it's still uh, be here. You guys aren't getting rid of me that easily. A lot has changed in Dallas over the years. It uh, has, especially post COVID. So um, yeah, it's not the same neighborhood as it once was, and uh, a lot of people are noticing that. Um, there was a Observer article about it recently. How musicians don't feel as safe or the same as they used to performing down there because everything is, uh, you know, I guess uh, more rowdy, more dangerous. It is, know, so yeah. It's wild. And yeah. uh, Dennis O'Neill brought up a good point. Um, 
it's it's very transient. There's not a whole lot of uh, I mean, sure. There's a lot of Dallas people that have lived there their entire lives, but there's a lot more transient traffic. People that go there, work, and then leave. Yeah. So or people that are moving in from other places. Yeah, and those are people that don't treat that. They're not going to treat Dallas like home, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. you don't know what you're going to get out of them. It's also, I guess, um, the um, inflation, how inflation has kind of rezoned everything, right? So, yeah. you know, now communities that aren't used to coexisting right next to each other, they're all in, in each other's faces, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, there's, for the longest time, there's this whole, this whole thing between Deep Ellum and Uptown, you know, for mm-hmm. the longest time. Yeah. You know, and now when those two worlds collide, you know, it's... Uh, it's when you see the routingness, you know, coming on into Deep Ellum. I think that's that might be a part of it, right? You know, that's what I think is so interesting yeah. is being yeah. in Dallas is being you're you're on one street and you're yeah. in one area and then you cross a street and now you're totally in a different. completely you different area, yeah. especially with Deep Ellum. Because I didn't even realize. I mean, it's it's obviously like that one main street, and so if I'm at like the shopping center, you know, one street over, it's like, oh yeah, this is nice. This is like uptown, you know, blah, blah, blah. and then I cross the street into the parking lot, and now I'm in Deep Ellum. Yeah, and now I can't be here after dark by myself. Well, I mean, I've, I've heard people say that, like, yeah. you don't want to go to Deep Ellum after dark. You don't. You don't want to have your car there. It I, was bad enough before COVID. I haven't been since COVID, and I don't even want to know what yeah. it's like now. Well, and yeah, and I've only heard rumors, but the last time I was there. And probably the last time I'm ever going to go to Deep Elm. Yeah. I can't imagine a reason I'd go back. It probably involves somebody paying me. <laughs> but I got my vehicle broken into and they stole my camera bag. I got followed to my car and I had to <sighs> tell them that I had a 22 in my glove box. Be like, if you'd like to continue following me, I'll, you, you can be really good personal friends with my 22 that's in my glove box right now. Uh, <laughs> I didn't actually have a 22 in my glove box. I was hard just telling them Hard bluff. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, you know. You, what are you going to do? Right? You should have said yeah. 40 cal. Um, actually it's more believable if it's 22 because I am a small framed female. So if I'm going to conceal carry anything, it's going to be something small like a 22. Gotcha. gotcha. Fair enough. I've got a really (laughs) compact, uh, Glock model 43 that, I mean, it's not as small as a 22, but it's pretty close. And a nine mil has got a little more knockdown power, but a 22, uh, you know, I could kill someone with it. It's got all the damage power you need right there. With half the sound and half the kickback. Dude, you pop, you pop off a 22. It doesn't even hardly sound like it doesn't sound like a gunshot. Exactly. (laughs) It's like, Oh, someone playing airsoft next to like next door. What's going on over here? You get away with that. Yeah. (laughs) Start running around with a hand cannon, like dirty Harry. You're going to draw some attention. Just a a bit. Quiet professional over here talking about getting away stuff. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. I would never, sir. No, no. Oh, absolutely not. And, um, you know, I used to be a, a pretty big gun advocate, but after that uh, boating accident where I lost all my guns, I just haven't bought anymore. So there's that. There's a boating accident where you lost all your guns? I don't want to talk about it, but Okay, yeah. well. They're all laying at the bottom of an undisclosed uh, lake. All of them. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I left my oven on. I got, I got a blast. Yeah. Well, this is Texas, so I mean. That's uh, true. Yeah. Well, he didn't even yeah. disclose if it's in Texas or not. We, no. we, we, we would never know. No. Oh, God. But I can't throw too much shade at you for going to Dallas because I moved down to Austin for, I think I was gone for nine, ten months. If there's a lot of creative opportunity in Fort Worth, there has to be something said about the sheer multitude of, of opportunities in Dallas. I mean, it's a bigger area. You've just got more of an audience. Yeah. They've just got, it's the sheer real estate that we don't have in Fort Worth. You know, yeah. Fort Worth is only so big. I, I think there's a, 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 a stricter protocol for getting through certain doors in Dallas mm-hmm. because there are so many people. Uh, Fort Worth is a little more welcoming in, in the uh, way of, oh, you want to do this? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see how we can collaborate and get you into the process. It'd be yeah. nice to start in Dallas and then kind of like branch into... Um, or start in Fort Worth and then branch off into Dallas. Yeah, so go, go in with some contacts. But it's I've I've looked and there's there's really like for what I want to do there's there's not the studio space available in Fort Worth. I found one you know lot that I was looking at leasing that was nice and that's it. Really? Yeah, because I'm trying to keep it in like the the downtown area, which is why yeah. the thought of uptown is so nice because there's so much you know there's so many nice great office spaces out there in Dallas, and <laughs> Fort Worth has got a lot of like just buildings and businesses that are sitting on prime real estate and not going anywhere. Yeah. So, well, and you also, you might be looking at the, the reason that there are spots available in Dallas is because it's so damn expensive. It is. <laughs> I'm not paying for it. Right. So I don't right. care. Right on. <laughs> so, uh, I was at Ridgely room, not to be confused with Ridgely theater, which is under the same roof. And I got to see the space poets, uh, debut performance. Yeah, um, I was um, I was hoping you'd, you'd be there. Um, 
that was that wasn't supposed to be uh, as public as a uh, you know as it should have been. It was it was it was more or less for my fiance Amanda. Um, oh really? Yeah. So she wanted to see me do the thing on stage, and uh, I decided uh, I was gonna book this impromptu one-off thing just to perform. Did you break into a private performance, Andrew? I think so. <laughs> I, know I, still, I know I was invited, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we we shared the, the at least the photos and stuff. But yeah, that was just um, a combination of uh, test running our new material and um, and being able to perform for my fiance. So yeah. I mean, that was uh, that was you know I didn't care about advertising that show or yeah. anything. Uh, it was booked by a shady um, pay to play scammy agency from Chicago anyway. So you know, is that who's running the shows out of uh, Ridgely? So what the Ridgely is doing is they're securing the deposit from from outside agencies. Okay, um, and uh, a lot of these agencies give maybe two percent back to the artists from ticket sales. So we Whoa. we basically play for free. You know? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's um, unfortunate that's the business model they have for local acts. I can't imagine a touring band when they rent out that main room for fifteen hundred dollars a day. What that band, like you know, Lorna Shore or anybody else who's on tour, is actually gonna get back? You know, nothing. I mean, you know, well, even and, if they pack the house. And you know talking I mean? to the other musicians uh, that were at that, uh, that were part of that lineup, nobody really had anything good to say about that venue. They were they they got bad vibes about the place. They didn't feel like the the Ridgely really uh, promotes or or uh, uh, backs the musicians. They they don't feel like they're being taken care of. They feel like they're kind of getting used up a little bit here. So I talked to the head of booking and I offered an alternative, which is what I'm doing of what I do for Psychedelic Panther. I get vendor involvement, and you know I basically at, at both venues last year and this year we we're basically offering the opportunity for those vendors to purchase retail space uh -huh. so they can vend their products if they originally offered a similar situation to cover their house fee that that means that everything that comes to the door is rightfully the musicians yeah and i think that's the way it, that it should be I, I i don't think uh i think anything else is dishonest yeah yeah yeah, well, it's it's definitely earning itself a reputation. I don't know if this is a new thing or if it's been going on for a while, but everybody I talk to is like, no, don't want to play there. Yeah. Not interested. And for me, I actually, uh, Jeff Zero sent me tickets. And uh, I was I was telling him, like, yeah, I'm going to be there. And he's like, okay, cool, I'll send you tickets. I was like, okay. I mean, I, I was coming to see your show. <laughs> and I, I didn't know about the full lineup yet. I was psyched that I'd, I I was going to be there and there were going to be two bands playing that I knew. Um, but I don't think... I hope I don't upset anybody. But it's going to be said anyway. I don't <laughs> think I'd pay money to go to Ridgely Room. Unless it was a friend who's putting on a show there and uh, they asked me to show up. Then I'm going to come. Well, yeah, it's, especially it's, with how it's sounding. It's like you could pay for tickets and the friend that you're going to support, they're not even going to be making the money off yeah, of it. Yeah, for sure, 100%. So. The, uh, the, the sound quality in that room, and I don't know what it is, um, I think it's just because it is a straight shot to, to a wall that's uh, 100 feet in front of the stage. It's, it's, uh, it's not enjoyable. It, if, yeah. if they turn it up uh, too loud, it starts to get painful. The sound, Which the, happens. The sound guy didn't know how to mix our sound, and uh, he had the guitar turned down for the first couple of songs. Oh, and, my God. And then he, yeah. on the third one, he blared it all the way up to where it was above everything else, and he had to pull it back down. So a lot yeah. of a lot of incompetency <clears throat> all around. Uh, I, I really do hope they figure it out. And if they're listening, I hope that they take this uh, with a grain of salt and uh, don't get up in their feelings about it because they know it's true. Well, they should get up in their feelings about it and then change it. But that sound guy wasn't making any friends that night. I think it was either the <laughs> first or the second band that went up. And I looked at my watch. I looked at my phone. They had about a minute and a half left, and they wanted to finish out their show. They had a, a song that they were going to play. And instead of giving them that minute and a half, as the guy was telling, you know, he's on the mic, and he said, okay, we got one more song for you. We're going to cram in here real quick. And uh, then we got to get off the stage. And before he had a chance to get the last part of his sentence up, sound guy started cranking the, the house music up. Gosh, darn it. Instead, wow. of, instead of going, hey, you know, sorry, man, there's not enough time for another song. Literally just drowning him out. That is just, so disrespectful. And you should have seen the fucking look on their faces. They were so mad. I would have been but, too. Hell. You know, you're, in, in, if you're paying a house fee like that. You're not making any money off of it. Get your flipping time's worth. Yeah. 
If not, take the amount of stage time I had, divide that by my house fee, and you're giving me that money back for the last minute and a half. Yeah, would it's would, petty, but would so would is never happen. But I, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying if they're going to be that petty, you should be that petty right back. Yeah, yeah. So it's terrible. But you guys were incredible. Space poets was great. And uh, was that your basis that was on your right? Uh, audiences left. Uh, that's our uh, life bassist we don't have an, an actual permanent member of the band but uh that's who we picked for live because he learns things on the fly and he's used to that um gig life you know yeah thankfully i mean he was willing to do that even for free right he didn't come at me after the show demanding you know uh, a standard rate or anything like that yeah but, that's really nice yeah boy he was getting it too yeah he Did was, you notice his head bobbing yeah. he was trying to take out <laughs> Yeah. All of his aggression on his <laughs> neck, dude. He, and uh, I was sitting next to Joe uh, Tacky from Cloudland, and we're sitting there, and we're watching, we're you know cheering you guys on. And all of a sudden, I see his phone start coming up, and I, I look at his screen, and he's zooming in on him, and he's 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 got the guy's full neck thing going on. Yeah, one <laughs> basis so recognizing one basis recognizing another. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But man, he was feeling it. He was yeah. feeling it for sure. <laughs> we, we, we were lucky to have him that night. I'm, I'm really, really appreciative. He has an interesting backstory. You guys lived in Vietnam. Wow. Uh, you know, you guys know there's a whole like psychedelic rock scene in Vietnam. That kind of adds up. But no, I didn't know Yeah, but say is like, that makes sense, <laughs> but I can't say that I would like pull that out in conversation yeah. and be like, were you guys aware? <laughs> no, that feels right. Yeah. Yeah. He, apparently he was part of that. Okay. There. Oh, okay. He played a few festivals. Is this recent? Uh, he moved here a few, like, like half a year ago, maybe mm -hmm. like eight months ago, you know? So yeah, recently, you know, he moved here because I guess, um, there's better hospitals here or something. Okay. So barely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Vietnam, I would hope. I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, I just mean like in terms of like healthcare and the, you know Vietnam the probably still insurance and stuff in the United States. I'd say is not great. Well, yeah, but Vietnam probably still qualifies as a developing country, right? Does I mean, it? I think um, you can't I, get power in some it, places. It's a lot more. Modern. You can't pa get power in some places in the United States, darling. Okay, larger percentage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, probably a lot more modern than what we think it is. Like you know? Oh. Uh, you're on yeah. three. Okay, mute me. No, first. nope. You're on two. Okay, go. <laughs> All right. Somebody might not appreciate the uh, health food snack that you're munching on right now. <laughs> if anybody wants it, they can they can talk to Andrew about getting an ASMR channel. Of just me eating crunchy Cheetos on a mic that is not muted, but I'm going to mute myself so I can eat these Cheetos. That's all right, get after it. It's okay, I'm a loud eater myself. It's all the, the smacking and the slurping. <laughs> it, it sounds like there's like, you know... Uh, a world to beast on the other side of the table every time <laughs> we eat. So, yeah. So, and uh, under the subject of uh, people moving out of Fort Worth, is that something we can talk about? That's something that's slated for possibly, um, probably t more towards the end of the year. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's no secret. I have a fiance in Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, she's in Hawaii and... Um, Shout out. We, we... Hello, Amanda Jarvis, uh, <laughs> soon to be uh, Amanda Guzman. Who I got to meet yeah. and uh, is one of the nicest people. She just has an extremely positive energy. She's, yeah, she she moves mountains with that positivity. Yeah. You know, she, her and I connected our, like, in a flow yeah. of, of making things happen. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, s such a crazy energy from her. Yeah. yeah. Well, the only, only person feeling that uh, Space Poet's performance more than your uh, standing uh, bassist was was her yeah she was down there cheering you on and taking video and well amanda actually has a huge role in in anything that i do now because um she's a professional singer she's in one of the top tribute bands in hawaii wow. that's awesome so um she she gets in there with me and we'll go over to technicalities of what i'm trying to do vocally and yeah she'll she'll make me better she's already made me better in so many ways so that's so great. sweet yeah, so. do you think you'll be uh jumping on a tribute band uh stage anytime uh, in hawaii what what uh what band does she tribute she is in a band called beyond paradise and um they uh they do top 40 stuff you know, that's awesome you know, for like the hilton and uh the four seasons and any any big conference from that the corporates people put together at those hotels, mm -hmm. you know, she'll probably be there performing, you know. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. Good match, the two of you, artistics. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm eternally grateful. What can I say? You know, extremely blessed in all the ways. The, uh, the pictures you were sending back on your last trip to Hawaii were just so, so beautiful. 
Yeah, it's a it's an inspiring landscape. You know, it's it's a jungle. Big Island is a jungle with two big volcanoes on them, yep. and both both volcanoes are active now. Is that a new thing, or have they always been? I thought somewhat one was active. active for a long time, and one is like semi recently active. One was active. Um, there was an eruption a few years ago, and uh, the activity slowed. Mm-hmm. Now both are going. That's good. And that's, there's a, that's not concerning in any yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it helps, helps people like me who are looking for real estate. Huh? That's true. I was about to say, it's like, give it two years and you'll have a lovely new beach that you didn't know you had. Yes. Yeah. Can you build on that? Probably not. Uh, volcanic rock? No, it's super porous. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if that'll hold anything, Probably but I'm also not a geologist. Sure. Make yeah. sure you get a geologist on the show at some point. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that happens. With a lot of people, they have to import their dirt. Yeah. Oh, in, in order to like make things flat or like make or grow things, you know, they have to import their own dirt and make their own gardens. Yeah, because you know, they can't. They have to dig meters through. A rock Imagine just like know. sitting at yeah. the coffee <laughs> table, be like, "Honey, going through like a pamphlet. Like, honey, where do you want to get your dirt from?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we Listen. better go Costco. I'm gonna need bulk. <laughs> I'm gonna need bulk. <laughs> what stores are they're not in Hawaii? Oh, plenty. I mean, there's so many things that are not in Hawaii. They don't even have Chick-fil-A in Hawaii. That's there. They're like, yeah. are there chain like grocery stores or is they more like local markets? I know there's a Dollar General. Thank God. They have <laughs> uh, a chain store called Lawns. L O H N apostrophe S. Lawns. Okay. And that has like that's like a CVS has everything. Yeah. 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 And um, and then the every. Every place has their own local stuff. And then they're more local based, you know. That's really uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, just recently, and I'm over here racking my brain trying to remember who I was talking to, but I talked to somebody recently that was on the island whenever they got that text message saying that there were going to be, there's going to be a nuclear strike. <laughs> um, and I wanted to get them on the show, but now I'm like having trouble remembering who I was talking to. But did your, your girlfriend have to live through that? Yeah, um, that was uh, on the island of Oahu. Fiance, excuse me. Yeah, but to say, I was like, I wasn't going to correct I, I you. I was going to wait I for you to up. correct yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I know, I don't I don't wear a ring. And I got mine right that, here. That's where. Yeah. That's so yeah, cute. So. Perfect. Aww. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, um, yeah, she lived through that. Um, everybody was uh, on Oahu was very angry about that, you know, and uh, <laughs> that guy got hemmed up, you know, yeah. like massively. I don't know this story. <laughs> Do you want to tell it, or you want me to uh, share my foggy recollection? Uh, I, I believe it, it was uh, someone to do with um, the, uh, the defense system out there, and um, um, anyway, um, somebody, I guess, um, in government who was in charge of, of monitoring um, radar, right? Mm-hmm. And so he said that uh, he publicly announced that there was an inbound missile strike coming to Oahu. From was so that it, clarified? It, it was a little crazier than that because it yeah. wasn't just announced. There is a, a, a network. Of, About to say, is yeah. it like one of those things where like you press a button, it's kind of like an amber alert kind of a thing, but it says like, "Hey, yeah, nuclear so inbound." This this showed up on everyone's phone. Oh, it said my you God. have eight minutes to live. Nukes are on the way. Take yeah. shelter wherever you are. And this was an accident. Mm-hmm. Or was well, he like playing a prank? I mean, the guy swears it was an accident. The well, guy, how would you? The guy swears he, he saw something and he was reacting to his training. Wait a minute, you're not going to clear this with your superiors? About to say, I was like, <laughs> wouldn't you? If there was eight minutes before nuclear inbound, that means that somebody else has already seen it, and you would have been hearing like, "Hey, check yours. I'll check mine. Are we both seeing this?" If you yeah. didn't hear anything like that, you would think. Don't yeah. just like, ooh, I'm going to send all these people a little text message real fast and just ruin the next forty years of their life. So you know? there, there are pictures or videos of uh, husbands and wives lowering their children down into manhole covers. Oh my God. Into the streets, trying to figure out any way they can to protect their family. That's the kind of panic that it caused. And that's going to be, that's, that's detrimental. That's not going to be something where it's like, Oh, thank God I'm still alive. No, that's, that's a life or death panic that people don't often experience. And now you've given them that yeah. for the rest of forever. I want, are there any like civil suits like against this guy, I against the government network? There has to be, there know. has to be, what, what that is me, emotional duress of the nth degree. Yeah. What it made me, uh, a lot of people realize my fiance said is that, uh, Hawaii and the Hawaiian islands don't have the infrastructure designed to be prepared for nuclear attacks. So now that's a new consciousness, right? Yeah. Where people are just chilling and vibing now, you know, that's in the back of their minds. Okay, right. well, we don't, 
if a new comes royally after, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. you th- you'd think they would have, I mean, like learned from what, like Pearl Harbor or something. They don't have any kind of like. There's, there's probably some strategic uh, presence like bunkers, there, but I don't shelters. know. But it's, I guess it's hard to fortify islands. You know, and like you just said, you know, you got to dig down through the lava rock. Through some <laughs> lava rock. <laughs> through a lot of porous. And if you're going to try to put a, a storm shelter or a bunker underground, you're it's going to be expensive. Yeah. And to do that for enough, to provide enough space underground for the entire uh, Hawaiian population would be I mean, at some point you run out of underground and you get to ocean water. So, (laughs) you know. Yeah. That's really sad. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. And and another thing that it did is that uh, now every time I think of Hawaii, I think of that. (laughs) I really do. And that's not what you should think of whenever you think of Hawaii. Not at all. You should think of the beauty and the escape and yeah. the people. Yeah, yeah, I think about the the native culture. I don't know if I need to even, like think about it as like an escape. Like I'm like, oh, this is a tourist attraction. I was like, no, that is a thriving culture that has been around for hundreds sure. of thousands of years, yeah. and now it's an island that could get nuked, and there is nothing anybody can do about it, and that is scary. Yeah, they do take probably seventy percent of their uh, what do they call that. Their, anyway, their, their product, their income is tourism, yeah. Domestic, what do they call that? Gross domestic product. GDP. 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 Yeah. Their GDP is like 70, 80% tourism, so. Oh, yeah, at this point. But yeah. I'd like to go sometime, and now i got homies there, so. Yeah, of course. Make yeah. it happen. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> stop inviting yourself places. No, you, it's what you I You send do. yourself to his concert, you're going to send himself to no, his. I got invited. I did. We used to bring this uh, little uh, podcasting thing, and we'll do a oh, podcast. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, uh, this goes with me everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Do a live broadcast yeah. from Oahu. Hell yeah. Big Island is where I'll be. I'll be. I'll be in the one north of Oahu. Uh, Honolulu. Yeah. No. Uh, no, no. Is that yeah. actually like Hawaii? Hawaii? Because Honolulu is a city on the Big Island, correct? Oh um, no, Honolulu is is in Oahu. Oahu is in Oahu. Oahu, Oahu is its own island, mm-hmm. and everybody um, usually thinks Oahu is Hawaii, but Oahu is Oahu, and is part of a chain of the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. Is there? The, I thought there was one island actually called. Hawaii. Hawaii or something. That, that's the big one, correct? That's a huge one. It's, okay, it's got huge it. huge and more north and more isolated than all the other islands. And it's just basically a big, massive jungle with two volcanoes on it. And um, it has two sides. We call one side Puna and the other side Kona. And the Puna side is all jungled out and lots of rain. Kona side is dry and it's known for the Ironman 0.70, you know, that big old triathlon. It's, it's more... It's drier, but at the same time, the volcano winds take all the volcano smog out there too. So you know, uh, it, mm. it's it's drier, more beachy, more touristy in its in its um, peak seasons. Um, cool. You know, um, Puna side is more mosquitoes and nope. dense vegetation. You lost me at mosquitoes. <laughs> no, you don't want any of the skeeters. Can't do it. Man. Dang it. <laughs> but uh, uh, Puna side is beautiful. I think I like I like the green. I like I like the rain. Yeah. it's different from the rain here it's just a rain that just comes and leaves just but a just a wall it's there and just, then it's gone just a happy little wall that just every morning you just hear from a distance coming so funny that florida is the and exact leaves. same wow. way yeah. in like spring to like fall it's uh-huh. it, you can set your watch four to seven p.m Four to yeah, seven PM every day. <laughs> it just it comes as a wall. You can hear it coming. It hits like the the beaches first, and then it comes inward, and then it just goes for a couple hours, uh. and then it goes away. So normally, what'll happen is everyone goes out to the beach in the morning, um, boardwalk, all that fun stuff, and then when they get like heat stroke, they go inside, they have <laughs> lunch, and while they're having lunch, the rain hits, and then the sun comes out immediately. The sands dry up again, and then people go back out for the evening. Perfect. It's time. it's excellent. It's so good. <laughs> So what's next for Space Poets, man? You guys got another show coming up? Uh, well, um, we are about to launch Volume 1, which is our debut album as this iteration of the band. Congratulations. And when, so much. when can we expect that? Actually, we're going to drop it uh, the day we perform at the festival. Okay. We're gonna, uh, it'll be there like that same day. It'll be up on all the streaming services, and we'll be announcing it from the stage. And um, we're going to give um, Johnny... Um, Govea the opportunity to review it beforehand. Love Johnny Govea. Make his assessment, and um, he's been kind enough to 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 do that for us. So you know, yeah, yeah. Johnny uh, is a big supporter of the show. Mm-hmm. He's 
been a big supporter of the artistic community here in Fort Worth. Um, I'm glad that he's going to be involved in that. That's really cool. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, very, uh, very, um, I guess, cornerstone kind of person, um, you know, uh, kind of binds a lot of people together, you know, unknowingly, you know, so. Yeah. Really good to have. Him. Well, that's that's what's cool about Fort Worth is that we've got people like Johnny Govea. There's There's quite a few of those. You know, we were talking earlier with uh, Dennis O'Neill before he left. He's just kind of picking out some of the photos in here, and we're talking about, you know, different guests that we've had on the show. But everybody, it's kind of like that uh, three degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Fort Worth is kind of like that. Like, this person has worked with that person. This person knows that mm -hmm. person. It's just, it's all uh, same, same. Everything's connected. Yeah. So... But it's because of people like Johnny Govea that have a position where they can highlight musicians and artists and and connect that with other people. So, yeah. very cool, man. Yeah. So, are you needing to get out of here? No, I was <laughs> checking to see like who are all mutual friends between Fort Worth Roots, Psychedelic Panther, and myself. Were I was trying to see like what creatives we all know. Genevieve, I was what's your uh, enterprise? But what's uh, so I actually it's a little bit of everything. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lie. It's it's. And, that, I and now you're an I actor. Need, well, I've I've done that, but it's been like stage acting. But no, this Very this cool. guy that we just interviewed with is has offered me like a, a little part in the show. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. He's like, no, literally, we're just we're just talking, and his face lights up. And he's like, oh, I was like, what does that mean? Like, what are the yeah, he almost fell out words. of his seat. It was weird. Yeah, yeah but it was fun. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I'm a what we call hyper local influencer, which means that I have a very specific audience. My audience being Fort Worth. Um, I was the um, I represented the city in the 2020 um, Miss Texas pageant as Miss Fort Worth. Um, I did a lot of. That's how I met this guy. Um, <laughs> cool. Did a lot of work with um, events and the. Um, kind of cultural district over in West 7th and everything like that. So it's a little bit of everything. It's a lot of um, just meeting other creatives and kind of kind of do, I kind of do what he does where it's like a human bridge. Like there's a lot of different things that we touch and we're kind of like the, the glue of a bunch of different things. So we know people and stuff. We know people and stuff. We know we do, we do things, you know, <laughs> that's, that's that my, was, that's my Dennis O'Neill. That's person. weird. You went like <laughs> Russian into, like and into Brooklyn and, yeah. or Chicago, whatever. I don't, I have no idea what that was. It works. Like, it's, a, it's a sound bit now. Oh it. God. <laughs> <laughs> my moose one's beat my sister <laughs> <laughs> if anybody doesn't know what that if anybody does not know what that original soundbite is from go check out episode 86 mm -hmm. of the fort worth Roots it's podcast it's very deep in there but it's I'm super weird. deep in there make sure you read through the or watch through the entire like what was it like an hour and a half it was a longer one yeah. it was such a long episode <laughs> but they're not going to have to dig for it because i'm going to use it as a sound bit in a gag reel on the social media episode <laughs> thank god well it's going to be like the header for all my social media videos oh my <laughs> Yeah. This is not the legacy I expected to leave, but you know what? I'll take it. A moose wants to be at my sister. It's from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, if you don't get the oh, reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. you watching any good TV lately? TV. Um, I've been really busy for TV. Kaleidoscope. Yeah. Um, Kaleidoscope. Do you know what that is? I'm not watching. Guys, seriously? <laughs> We're Kaleidoscope? Well, first of all, before we go into this, Netflix. what network? Okay. Netflix. Before you I can even it. ask, it's Netflix. It. Okay. Yes. No, it's going to be like one of those really random ones like Peacock or something. No. <laughs> it's Netflix. And what it is, is it's a, it's a heist show. Okay. So every episode, there's eight episodes. They're all named after a color of the rainbow. Okay. You start with this, I believe it's, is it black or white or something? I don't remember. But it's like an eight minute like preface of this is what the show is going to be. This is the beginning. This is the end. This take this heist has been planned for years upon years upon years and the best part of the show is that you can watch the episodes in any order oh cool and it makes sense so, so there's episodes from like years before two weeks before the heist the day before the heist and each one is a different color so you can watch them in any rainbow order hmm. or not even in rainbow order like it doesn't have to be in order but any episode order you want you can just shuffle them and it'll still make sense by the time you get to the last episode mm. it's incredible I like it it's a very weird premise or not, I mean, the premise of the show is it's a bank heist. It's not that crazy. Yeah. But the, the way that they set it up is... And it's all is, about the same heist. Yes. Okay. It's just the things leading up to it. Hmm. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. And the way that you watch the episodes obviously changes your, your perspective on how the heist ends up happening. Yeah. So it's it's really cool. All right. Netflix, I have to check it out. Yeah. 1898. Is that the one with Harrison Ford? It's the one... The one before it. 
No, it's uh, it's it's a new series on Netflix that's all about um, dimensional travel. Oh, yeah. okay. 1898? 1898. Um, and this is Netflix? Netflix. Okay. Has uh, the same um, starring actor that did Dark. I don't know if you uh, yeah. watched Dark. Awesome. I didn't watch Dark. Now, Dark was a, like a foreign series, right? Yes, a German yeah. series. And that one's about time travel. And it did, what, three seasons, four seasons? Um, Something like something that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I want to say three or four. It, it was long, but I, I was, I was, I, I, I dive into that stuff. Just yeah. Like, just I like those head, uh, get lost in that. brain twisters or whatever you want to call them. Psychedelic benders. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what happens? Um, no, don't. No, <laughs> spoil it for me. Oh my God. Give no, me a little you're spoiling, you're going to spoil just a little. it for anybody who's listening. <laughs> just give us a synopsis then. Oh my God. Just a little one. Okay. Um, basically, um, without ruining the whole premise of the story, um, it, it's kind of like the Matrix. It's, okay. It's, 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 it's different realities within one reality. Nice. That's that's hence a, the dimensional. Yeah. Aspect it's kind of like a it. shared dream, and then there's different Ooh. aspects of other realities entering the shared dream, and it's like a like a detective series. They have to figure out, okay, what's the root and the source of all this? Where are we? You know, why why are we trapped in this? You know, and uh, it gets really interesting. That's all I can say. Without how reading. how yeah. long is it? Have they? Is it one of those things where like where they've released every episode, or you have to like wait every week for a new episode? Oh no, I think I think just the one season. Oh, so, so it's that's a, all right. Binge worthy, perfect. Yeah. I I need a full season. I so like this. Uh, was it HBO? I think there's a new show called The Last of Us. That yeah, with I uh, saw the Pedro first Pascal? episode and I'm like waiting for the next episode to come up and it doesn't. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've I heard amazing things. Everybody is watching that show right now because that's a that's an adaptation from a video game, isn't it? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. But the first episode is just shit, dude. Is it's it balls to the wall nuts? So this is uh, it's one of those like zombie things, yeah, isn't it? Like post apocalyptic yeah. and whatnot. But the, the they're called clickers, aren't they? I don't know. I think there's uh, there's I a was, I was editing while I was watching it, oh so I missed God. probably some details. I love when you do this thing <laughs> where you start a conversation topic and then you can't actually prolong the conversation about this topic. You mentioned this before. I have mentioned this before. <laughs> well, there's a there's a makeup artist that I follow on Instagram and she did a look inspired by uh, The Last of Us and it looks she said that they're called clickers where they mm. look like zombies but they have this weird like fungal thing yeah. coming out of like their head and they do like those really like gross kind of yeah. like grotesque movements and right. stuff. Yeah. Well, and that that so at the beginning of the episode and you'll like this too it's all about fungus right and uh the mycelial uh habit environment or whatever you want to call it the um, ecosystem right very cool so uh, immediately whenever they start talking about that i'm like "Ooh, okay yeah. you've piqued my interest it's a little different because all the zombie movies are viral mm -hmm. or, bacterial or they're like warfare yeah, or just yeah, like that. Like yeah. a chemical agent or whatever the thought but, of it being a fungi is really cool well and they explain at the very beginning they're like this is why it would be so bad because fungus like there's really no way to it's effectively... It's a huge underground. Like, people don't understand how, how connected... It's everywhere. Yeah, exactly. But there's there's also, there's no way to effectively eradicate it. Like there's a virus not. or bacteria. You You've know, got things for that. Yeah, yeah, it's basically... Na it's nature's narrow network. Sunlight yeah. or heat will kill both virus and bacteria. That doesn't work with fungi. And that, not if it... Cause it, 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 and it's completely plausible too. I mean, there's there's instances in nature. There's different kinds of fungal spores that can affect oh yeah. like animal or insect brains and turn them into zombies. And then they have like fungal yeah. things coming seen, out of their bodies. Have yeah. you seen the ant thing where the the bacteria gets inside the ant and it starts controlling the ant? It go, it, it, it attaches crazy. to the uh, the spores attached. They breathe it in. It attaches to their brainstem, right, or with their version of their insect version of a brainstem. And what they'll do is they they turn into like literal zombie ants so they're still moving and stuff but it's being eaten from the inside out and they no longer do anything to sustain themselves and so this bacteria or this i'm sorry this this yeah bacteria literally um has them climb up very perilously to the top of these tree branches because it's in the rainforest and then by the time that it takes the ant to get up there its body is full of this stuff and the second it hits like that thing and it's now in open air it explodes and that's how these baby bacteria or fungal spores or whatever they are are released to wow. do it again because they're literally in the wind. It's super intelligent. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's it's wild how it works. I've seen so. the the one with the where the slug eats like the spore and their oh, eyes start this. to do crazy <laughs> bulgy things like change colors and bulge out and that attracts the birds and then the birds will come down and swoop up the slug 
And so now, now it's airborne. It's airborne. It's, 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 not only is it airborne, but the bird gets hijacked, and its brain like oh makes my it, god makes it fall into the ground, and then then you'll see how it emerges, oh and it emerges god. through the chest cavity, just like how an alien. Crazy is that? That is so gross. So in, <laughs> they cover this in the first like five minutes of that that series, but uh, the reason that fungus cannot grow inside the human body apparently is because we are over ninety four degrees. So an ant. A bird or a lower slug. body temperatures. No, yeah, no. There's no competing body temperature, so that's why that's a thing. But the scary part is, like, as a planet, we're starting to increase in temperature, right? Which so means that every fungus is going to start getting better at adapting to higher temperatures. They might have to adapt. Oh, that's terrifying. And it's only got to go. Well, what, and then four there's degrees? also like that yeah. that thing that we started that um, ecologists started noticing that with the melting polar ice caps, you're starting to see a lot of the tundra that mm. was permafrosted is now no longer permafrosted. So all these Gone extinct out. plants mm. and funguses and things like that these these viral like these viruses and bacteria that haven't existed for thousands upon millions of years and things like that that we have no antibodies for because they were gone before we were a thing. Yeah. They're starting to melt. Mm -hmm. It's scary. That that uh, really expensive bunker buried under lava in Hawaii is starting to sound, sound really, really good. good right now. Let's go <laughs> really buy some good. real estate. Let's pull our resources and go buy an underwater bunker in now, Hawaii. Hold, hold on. If you built the bunker and uh, then allowed lava to encase it, that, that'd take care of some of the expense. See, the problem with that being is that what material you're going to use <laughs> that's going to allow lava to uh, collect on top of it before it cools and mm. hardens into rock, darling. Pyrex. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess, I, I guess, um, it, I guess underground would be hard, you know, um, unless, uh, you were in a volcano, which doesn't sound like, sounds toasty, like sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> but sounds, thankfully it's too warm yeah. for the fungi. Oh yeah. Fungi can't go in lava. <laughs> we're Aha. perfect. We <laughs> found our solution. <laughs> It so, it does sound like <laughs> geothermal though like you could probably get some geothermal energy out of that hell so. yeah <laughs> yeah why hasn't uh hawaii tapped into that resource probably because uh, it's incredibly dangerous to do so yeah you don't yeah. want to be drilling holes in a volcano no yeah. probably not <laughs> you also don't want to be sending people into volcanoes thermal vent oh. <laughs> let's see into this project all right so psychedelic panther you can find them on instagram at psychedelic panther your website that you got up specifically for this festival psychedelicpanther.com where else can people find info on this badass festival? We have a Facebook page also. Um, needs a little bit of love. Uh, just at Psychedelic Panther Festival. Okay. Yeah. So try um, to get this episode out pretty quick for you. Um, are you still looking at vendors as of, what are we, the 21st of January? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we need plenty of vendors. Okay. If, uh, if you're out there and you want this opportunity to sell your art at, at our festival, more than welcome to reach us at our email Psychedelic Panther Fest at gmail. Be sending you an email later. <laughs> okay, very cool, very cool. Thank yeah. you. Got a vendor right here. Yeah, yeah. I sold a art at their hundredth yeah. episode Love party. Um, How'd for, that go? Did you uh, do okay? Bank, nice, my guy. Nice. I got so many of those paintings out of my house. I was God. It was so. That's great. uh. That's the first one that I put together. Is uh, out there at Pouring Glory last September. The vendors loved it. The musicians dug it. Everybody that I talked to enjoyed it. So. Yeah. How's it feel? Patrons how's it, loved it. How's it feel to put that together? Oh man, it was uh, so. So here's a weird thing, and tell me if you experienced this. So I, leading up to that event, stressful, lots of stuff to do, and then the event came and went, and the very next day, I just felt like kind of lost or mm -hmm. empty. There was a depression, like a very mild depression that settled in. Yeah, after but it's, that. it's you've been so focused on this, like yeah. what do you do now that it's done? Exactly, I get it. Exactly, exactly. And, and I mean, it was the same way, just having a booth there. It was so stressful up into it. And then it came and went so quickly. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah, a mountain of uh, preparation for just that little five hour, six hour. Yeah, but people event. loved it. Yeah. It went people were already great. asking, like, when's the next one? That's so cool. Well, it's going to happen again in September. And this year, uh, pending approval from the owners at Pouring Glory, we'll be doing it back there at Pouring Glory. Perfect. So, That'd be awesome. Yeah. I want to do it again. Uh, at least this year at PG, if they'll let me. And then I think the following year, we're going to need a little bit more room. More room. Yeah. yeah. But that little courtyard was. We're not going to, we're not going to run out of love for PG. That place is awesome. They're and, incredible. Uh, uh, Fort Worth Roots is always going to support that place. So. Yeah. For any of my people listening, because this is going to get posted on my social media as well. Um, yeah. If you are a vendor in search of something, um, 
check the check the information at the bottom of this video um check the information at the bottom of the site andrew will do a really good job tagging psychedelic panther and all this stuff i know i've got a lot of creative people that follow me that are always looking for outlets and audiences so but psychedelic panther is uh very established while my event went off well psychedelic panther uh made my event look like child's play uh <laughs> you did such a good job and this year Thank is going to be so much better I got all sorts of love for uh, our dearly departed Maine at Southside uh, that R. is R. no R. longer with us, but you're doing it at Lola's, and there's a lot more space. It's yeah, a lot nicer. Yeah, he was telling nicer. me about it before the show. Lola's got a new spot. Yeah, and it's, it, it's definitely festival grounds. Yeah, hell yeah. Good. Definitely festival grounds. So yes. That so stage. much more space. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, Are you going to be using both stages? Because they have the inside and the outside stage. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. Be two light shows uh, this time. So nice. when the sun goes down, that outside stage is going to light up. I already got somebody coming in from, from out of town that, that specializes in that. And Very cool. You know, he's a uh, very psychedelic and and what he does. You know, it's not going to be on the Panther because we don't have two installations, but it'll be definitely it'll, it'll definitely give it the the feel that that the inside stage has. Yeah. You know, so that is so cool. Are you bringing the head back? That yeah. Really cool Panther head. Yeah. Very cool. We already cool. got um, James uh, working on it. Our nice. artist. So yeah, yeah. For for people that slept on last year's event, uh, psychedelic Panther, they had this. I'll try to describe this correctly. A, a 3D uh, structure of a panther head and it was basically a projector screen and they had all sorts of badass graphics on this thing that I sounds mean, so cool it was really cool and it was so good that i thought the projector had to be behind the head mm -hmm. because it was just so laser tight like everything was perfect but it is the head it, there is a head but yeah. instead of the projector behind it the projectors are coming from different angles in front of the head Ooh. which doesn't seem possible because it was so so tight and perfect but they customized it for every band that went up, and it was just the coolest damn thing ever. So that segues into the next question. If this is sounding super interesting, is there going to be information um, on how to get tickets and things like that? Oh, yeah. It's already on our website. Perfect. Uh, cool. It's on the website. It's on our Facebook Facebook page. Panther Perfect. Perfect. Very cool. What we are looking for, uh, if you're listening out there, is sponsors. Um, sponsors yeah. uh, would make a world difference in, in this endeavor. Um, if you, uh, We can... Go ahead and shoot me an email, um, reach at me through my other uh, socials and contact, and uh, I would love to, to talk with you about opportunities to sponsor this festival and um, get your name on our flyer, even get you some some booth space uh, for, your, for your support. So um, any uh, any one of you who would like to sponsor, please reach out. Um, vendors included, um, we're still getting this together, and it's, it's going to be great no matter what. It, it already has yeah. all the potential in the world. Um, the more community that, that comes together on this, the better it will be. And it's like I told everybody last time. They are like, oh, you put this together. No, I didn't. You guys did. That's right. all you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's Whenever you do something this What's size. the word of the day yeah. is collaboration. It's everybody. Yeah. 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 Well, and we've talked a lot about the sponsorship and vendors and the success of the last show. But what people really need to know is that if they want to see some absolute murderers on stage, the bands that you're bringing out are incredible. If you're going to see a show this year, you need to come see this. Uh, I'll th be going. This is such a badass going. event. It's it the so 7th cool and 8th of year. April, correct? Yes. Perfect. Everyone yeah. put that in your calendar. It's Friday <laughs> and Saturday. <laughs> and uh, I got to record with quite a few bands. I can't remember how many, but um, we'll try to... Because you are bringing the Fort Worth Roots podcast to this, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> you're, 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 you're already first in line, man. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll be trying to... You want to bring a uh, co-host? Maybe. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, Easy. But, uh, media pass, media pass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah media pass. <laughs> um, but yeah, so to your uh, uh, bands that are coming out there, to uh, the ones that are on the lineup, uh, just uh, know that Fort Worth Roots is going to be there trying to steal you, steal you away from... Uh, from the activities for yeah, 15 minutes. Little interviews. Yeah, little interviews. We should talk about getting some uh, some little like mics that don't have like the headset so you can literally just like go up and be like, hey, can we talk for like five minutes? I have them. Okay, yeah. use those. Yeah, so I've, I, what I've been doing at these events is I'll have headsets hooked up and I got one dedicated line for a mic. So if somebody does You did that up, at the 100th episode. Yeah, 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 yeah I remember yeah. that. Seemed to work out pretty good. I love these damn headsets though. 
They're very comfortable. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about where your head's at. So the last time I did an episode, we were at Sam, the failed podcast. Um, you and kept kicking the mic stand. No, I didn't or keep the kicking table. it. it I kept, table. well, I kept kicking the table because it was like a coffee table. It's a very comfortable setup, but I forgot that my mic was stationary and lived where it did. And I kept hitting it with either like my hand because I talk with my hands, which is why I'm now like sitting like this where I'm not talking with my hands. You don't have to here. You can do that. Oh my God. Jazzercise. Tai Chi. <laughs> Perfect. No. Um, and I kept smacking it and you can hear like a. <laughs> and you can hear well my mic lives here now yeah. <laughs> that was like the joke throughout Five the episode times, yeah. and sam's just like sitting next to me like oh my fucking god stop touching my shit <laughs> and space poets where can people hear space poets oh space poets uh as soon as we announce uh, it's right. going to be on our website um and all the streaming services uh if you follow our socials you'll be privy to that announcement as early as it as it as uh, we get back our our masters, right? Because we are officially announcing at our show, but um, we are um, we are going to be um, releasing the tracks to the Fort Worth Weekly before then. So you know, nice. you know, if you are an an actual follower of the page, and uh, you know, you will know about us. You know, nice. That's so exciting. So, yeah. Is it Fort Worth? I'm oh, excuse me. Jesus. <laughs> Space Poets on Instagram. Uh, sp- uh, Space Poets Official on Instagram. Space Poets Official. And Space Poets Follow you right now. Music on Facebook. Perfect. And then uh, www.spacepoetsband.com. Outstanding. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for being at the studio and recording with me again. And thank you. It's for always a pleasure me. to have Joe here. Um, I know the place looks a little more jazzed up than last time, but we got a long ways to go. It's so. amazing. In Ho- there. Hopefully next time you show up, we'll be rocking and rolling. For all of our listeners, this is a fully functional multimedia studio up in here. And uh, my friend Andrew has done an amazing job of converting a little warehouse space into something fully, fully production level. So Very nice of you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Very impressed, as always. All right. Fort Worth Roots, thank you for being here. Bye, guys. And we'll see you next week. All right. A big shout out and a huge thank you to our stand-in co-host today, Genevieve Farnham. Her information will be in the show notes. My buddy Joe Guzman, dude, thank you so much. Y'all can go to psychedelicpanther.com for more information. I will have more links in the show notes for you, including ways to find space poets. These guys are awesome, and I, I, there's a very, very good likelihood that you have never heard anything like the music coming out of the space poets. You need to check that out. All right, what else? So, this episode here is uh, the strangest thing I've ever done. I did not cut one thing out of this episode. Not one. So, <laughs> let me know what you think about that. I uh, Some really awesome people that I got to hang out with this weekend. You know, leaders in the industry of local podcasting were telling me, I, uh, I, I just, I really squeeze the shit out of these episodes and there's no room to breathe. And it's a little bit anxiety inducing i've had a a friend of mine say this in the past as well so i did something i've never done before i gave you pretty much the entire uncut track yeah i didn't make one cut to this episode so you got the full thing all the uhs and the ahs and the dead space so i'm trying this out but i need your advice i want to know what you think you can either hit me up email style email style media at fortworthroots.com or you can call the dedicated Fort Worth Roots podcast hotline, 817-988-1292, and leave me a voicemail. We'll use it on the episode. It'll be dope. Do I need to stop using that word? I noticed, I noticed I've been saying that a lot, too. What an incredible week. This has been awesome. Uh, pouring glory, giving us some love, showing us some support, picking us up as a, a sponsor. Um, that's, a, that's a huge moment for us here at Little Little Fort Worth Roots. So, Scott... Folks over there at Pouring Glory, thank you so much for your support. Uh, today, it is Sunday. I'm doing this recording uh, here at the studio. And on Sunday, today, they are doing a doggo-friendly uh, dogs-off-the-leash thing at the uh, Pouring Glory patio. They've got a huge outdoor area. And uh, doggos are just running free there right now. And uh, Scott was telling me how often they do this, and I have already forgotten I want to say it's every Sunday, but I don't. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It is a very dog-friendly establishment, and uh, we did a thing with uh, BC Save, which is a border collie rescue, and uh, they brought all the doggos out there. So um, it is a very dog-friendly place, and I love that about them. So uh, go check that out. You got doggos? Take them with you. 
All right. What other things did I want to tell you about? The Visit Fort Worth thing, we already talked about this at the beginning of the episode. Dude, this was so wild. Like, I don't know what... I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, I was just honored, flattered, flabbergasted that I even got considered for this. Like, why are they inviting Fort Worth Roots? But um, it was a really great moment. We had a lot of fun. We took some cool videos, cool pictures, talked to some awesome people, and uh, just got to represent podcasts um, at... What I have heard is the largest uh, citywide event that happens all year long. So, big deal, and we got to be there. That was cool. Hope we get to go back next year. Shout out to Visit Fort Worth. You guys are awesome, and uh, we love you for bringing us out. That was great. And they picked the best podcasts in town, too. Uh, We had some uh, legends there, and I got to sit next to the legend, uh, Jerry Jonestown Massacre. Had not only Dustin Snyder... But I also got Matt Stubbs. And then there was the uh, Tim Love after party after that. Um, I didn't stick around too long for that, you know, but uh, it was cool. <laughs> you just wouldn't believe the uh, the spread they rolled out. Um, I can't, I don't remember what fish this was, but there was a filleted fish <laughs> and a bunch of other hors d'oeuvres and things. But anyway, I ended up getting a taco from a taco truck. Um, yeah, but it was, it was cool. It was cool to see that and get to experience it and all that but getting to hang out with my buddies afterwards was the real uh awesome part of that day um it's great okay what else exciting weekend yeah we talked about that all right um and i'm gonna try not to edit the hell out of this exit this uh outro so let's let's get it together andrew okay how about the uh let's talk about the sponsors you already know about pouring glory go check that out tell them you heard about them on the fort worth truth podcast please do that um incredible food i eat there at least once a week wood post metalworks woodpostmetalworks.com if you go there and check out their awesome stuff um and then at checkout if you'll use offer code podcast 817 they are going to give you 10 percent off and that's awesome what is wood post metalworks well they specialize in metal signs with or without led backlighting they do fence and gate repair or installation they do light steel fabrication industrial plasma cutting and more and these are going to be the folks provided i can get into their busy schedule because these people do operate with a pretty hefty backlog it sounds like i want to have them put the the signs together we need some uh, signage on the front of this building i've been waiting didn't want to push it too soon, but I think it's time. We need to put some Fort Worth Root swag on the board out there. Hang our square. So these will be the folks doing that. Um, but they do more than just signs, uh, as, as I read off there for you. Uh, light steel fabrication, you know, anything like that. Um, but they do have some awesome stuff uh, in the arts department. They were at uh, Art Goggle last, last year. Was it last year? I guess so. And uh, they had some really cool stuff. Uh, they were next to Hawk Walker uh, Originals. They kind of had their two areas set up together. I, I believe that's right. Uh, but just a ton of artistic stuff and uh, great gift ideas from them and Hawk Walker Originals. Uh, you can check them out, woodpostmetalworks.com. Don't forget to use the offer code PODCAST817 at checkout. And then Hawk Walker Originals, we talked about them at the beginning of the episode. You can get them at hawkwalker.com. They offer a huge variety of of unique and personalized gifts, also laser engraving to customize just about anything you can think of. And uh, Angela over there at Hawk Walker Originals is uh, very good at what she does. She just recently sent me a picture of some custom mugs she made for Poo Life Crew after we did that uh, recording with them and then the, the blowout where they put on one of the most amazing shows I've ever seen out at Ridgely Theater. Uh, that was last February 4th. Anyway, she saw all the videos and stuff I was posting up. She's like, I want to make them mugs. So she did. She just made them, and they're amazing. Can't wait to get those to the dudes over there at Poo Live Crew. That's going to be fun. Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. I just made a, a short video talking about roofing tips. You can find that on uh, YouTube. It's on the Fort Worth Roots podcast YouTube page. Um, it's like seven minutes long. And basically what Darren is talking about is, Hey, don't let just anybody on your roof. And he's not trying to oversell roofing solutions by Darren Houck. He's just talking about, you know, letting strangers on your roof is a bad idea, but he's also got some other 
little tips and things inside that video that we made for you. So check that out, especially if you uh, don't have a roofer. Or maybe you do have a roofer, but you need a better one, or you want a local guy. That's, uh, that's the video to check out. All right, Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. You can get them at roofingsolutionshouck.com. And their phone number is 817-692-8496. And uh, one of the things we talk about in that little video is the roofing tune-up. And because you are a Fort Worth Roots Podcast listener, you get 50% off on a roofing tune-up. So, what are you waiting for? Seriously, pick up the phone. Anyway, 817-692-8496. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, Pouring Glory. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for your support. And um, this is the kind of stuff that's going to allow us to get these awesome festivals going. We're putting together a music series. And I don't have all the details ironed out. And I don't like talking about stuff whenever uh, ideas are still in the idea phase. But we're going to find eight, I believe, eight different establishments around the city of Fort Worth and uh, do little music series. We're going to have different artists. We've already got five artists that have kind of tentatively said yes to this. Uh, but they're going to be playing at these different venues all over the city of Fort Worth. And then we're going to conclude the music series uh, with our September event. Now, this is all taking place in 2024. I'm working all the details out right now, but this is going to be something that we're going to continue to do, provided this one doesn't turn into an absolute disaster. <laughs> no, it's going to be good. I've got really smart, wonderful uh, people that are helping me put this together. And... Uh, it's going to be great. And the musicians are all about it. I, honestly, I haven't had one person say no yet. So it's going to be good. And uh, that uh, September event in 2024, with all this time to plan and all this time to pick up sponsors that want to get involved with this, it's going to be great. So look forward to that. We are still doing our September event this year. Um, and I've, I've got all sorts of details to work out on that, but you can expect us to be at Pouring Glory this September. Do not have a finalized date yet, but we're going to do uh, what we did last year, and it's going to be awesome. So September, just remember, you got something that you're going to have to squeeze into the schedule. So, And it's going to be on a Saturday, because I like Saturdays. And it's going to be early, because I don't like staying up late. There you go. All right, that's sponsors. What about events? Okay, you already know about... Psychedelic Panther, that's coming up on the 7th. It's going to be awesome. Go to psychedelicpanther.com. They're also on Facebook. Check it out there. Uh, and as I get updates, I will share it on social media with you as well. Um, and then on the 22nd, we've got the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show. Last year, there were 7,500 people that our head counter counted before he got tired and quit. <laughs> So we don't know how many people showed up for this thing, but we know that 7,500 people showed up. We know that we had 300 classic cars there. Um, there were, I think, 88 vendors. And uh, we I think we had three, four, maybe even five food trucks scheduled. And uh, I think only two or three showed up. Uh, it's a sore subject. Like, what happened? But anyway, this year, we got the numbers to back it. And uh, those food trucks are going to show up. Because we ran out of food quick last year. And that wasn't our, our friend Darren's fault. Because he had scheduled enough food for this thing. They just didn't show up. This year they're going to be there. Without fail. So, anyway. Um, lots of good stuff. That's happening at YMCA Camp Carter. There's going to be all sorts of stuff going on out there. Uh, I have heard horseback riding, archery, uh it's a, it's a climbing wall or a rappelling wall. There's a zip line. There's uh, kayaks or canoes. Uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's going to be good. There's going to be live music. There's going to be lots of vendors. And there are going to be a ton of classic cars. And the reason I was just spitting out the numbers about last year is because that kind of gives you an idea of what you can expect this year. Last year, we had no idea what to expect. We were hoping for big things, but we didn't really know. This year, we know. And uh, if nothing else, just getting out there to Camp Carter is, is something worth your time right there. It's a beautiful 300-and-something acre park um, tucked off in the middle of Fort Worth. But whenever you're on the property, the trees are so tall and it's such an expansive piece of property, you, you, don't, you do not feel like you're in the middle of the city. It's pretty wild. So, okay, we've talked about sponsors. We've talked about events. 
I've said a lot of crazy things. And now you're trying to figure out why you're still listening to me. Thank you very much for your support. I go on and on and on about our sponsors and how much I appreciate them. But the show only exists and continues to exist because you listen to the show. Every time you stream an episode, every time you download our content, you're making us a little bit stronger. So thank you. Thank you for listening today, and thank you for your support. We're going to keep doing stuff. We're always going to have an episode out for you Mondays. I tell people it's either death or prison. It's the only thing that's going to keep me from putting out an episode on Monday for you. Uh, we've been doing pretty good. We've got almost, I'd have to look back at the notes, but almost two years without missing a Monday. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that. Very consistent. So if, uh, if that's worth anything to you. <laughs> We've done it. We've done it for two years almost. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go now. All right, we'll see you next. Oh, no, I will not see you next week. I will see you probably Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to put out another episode for you um, with uh, Darren Houck, who is just coming to talk about psychedelic, or excuse me, the River Oak Spring Fest car show on April 22nd. So I decided I was going to put these two event heavy episodes out on the same week just to kind of help with the backlog. We got a lot of recordings right now. So I'm, I'm going to have to really get after it and make sure that you've got lots of episodes uh, at your disposal. All right. That's it. I love you. Have a good week. See you.